the technical working group. This is a gender technical working group in the sub county level. It was formed by the county government, and uh, the major aim of and the role of the, the gender technical working group in the sub county level is to resource mobilize, to know each other. You know, it is very important to just know who is in the health. Uh, is the health facility probably in Tongaren and he will be able to meet the DCC in Tongaren and the administrator in Tongaren so that when you have a case as an administrator you can easily know who to call in, 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 the, in the hospital and you can call the police we can at least be able to know how you can ensure that you report the case and follow up with the ODPP so just being here and knowing each other it's very important and uh, one challenge that we have had as a county is uh, ensuring that we have a consistent meeting in the sub-county level. And in this, I want to really thank the Division for Human Rights. In the county level, the Gender Technical Working Group, we are very, uh, we usually have a very consistent quarterly meeting, and it has, it has seen some progress. We have seen some progress over the years. The DCC, has, has mentioned that in 2020, 2020, 2021, Bungoma was uh, in the news, uh, and it was reported that we have a very high rate of teenage pregnancy, but I can actually confirm that we are seeing a, a reduction of it. And uh, that is because of the meetings of the Gender Technical Working Group. So I really want to acknowledge the partnership the first time you are actually coming to Bungoma, I've heard about you. You have really been capacity building our, you have been training, uh, because my director has been telling me that the physician for human rights has called me for a training, and uh, I can see that now you're coming down to Bungoma County. And uh, I want to, to beseech you that you continue. You keep coming to Bungoma. Bungoma is a, it's a very special county. You can see that someone like me, a young person, a young woman has been given an opportunity to, to, to be in government. And it is very diverse. It, it comes in different shapes and sizes. And that's why our, our sexual and gender-based violence crimes are very diverse. If you go to Mount Elgon, we are having issues with FGM. If you come to the, to the border areas, we have a very different type of SDBV. So continue coming to Bogoma, we see how we can we can solve this issue because as duty bearers that is our work. Sisters, but we really worked hard. Uh, we have these registers and even the documentation in those registers, Wakatu uh, and to extract evidence that apartheid kwamba some registers are fully not fully filled, the reports are not fully filled. So we thought it is important also to train our uh, staffs on uh, how to document in those registers so that when the case is being handled in court, at least from the source documents, there is evidence from the source document. So some of the positives is that uh, there's been some capacity building in a, uh, some ca capacity building which has been enhanced in some period. Some of us, like me, I was trained in GBV some time last year and a few of my colleagues so this capacity building has come a long way and it's really improved some services in Tongare. So it is important to continue with that. Then sensitization of the community stakeholders, where we've gone ahead to even sensitize our CHVs on these GPV cases in Tongare. I'll be passed. On safe space or shelter, we don't have any Tongarin sub county. Uh, so we can't really appreciate the positive from that because we don't have it. Uh, the other, on police, not all police officers have been trained on GBV matters, especially on attitude towards the cases or the victims. Uh, there's also lack of resources to facilitate case IFUS on the of police post. Now maybe there's a case somewhere or maybe you want to lift a case to maybe Anapambia, Kojeki Dogo, Gari, Metoka, or Fuel Aiko. So there is a delay in service provision. 
There's a good thing we noticed about the police force in Tongaren. There is uh, gender-based desks that have been uh, allocated in every police station. I think Wanakuana could a separate wing and operate on. There's something that was not there up on the So that is a positive thing. the community, but some are still in the process. So as to see that the community should be aware of matters GBB due to the, the delays coming to hospital. Yeah. Okay, what's your suggestion? The, the mandate squarely lies on the, the department, the county government, the department of gender, and the state department, national government. You will actually notice that uh, in this uh, multi-sectoral approach, the the, the, uh, the departments that I've mentioned actually focus a lot on the prevention. The referral pathways, we don't have any duty when in that in health, police, the administration, we find that they have a certain duty to play. But then our mandate is to bring them together, to go to the community and also do a lot of sensitization and advocacy. But unfortunately, in the country and in the county, we realize that we have not focused on that. We have focused a lot on the, the duty bearers in the referral pathways, but we have left the sensitization without any funding. So we struggle a lot and we depend on, 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 on uh, partnerships with NGOs like this. One last one, and then we can hear. the basic need for the communities are funded. And as much as we do the sensitization the hospitals and even outreaches, we usually deal with others at home. And whenever we go home, most of the parents are not free to talk to their children in terms of sexual issues and gender based violence. So I think if uh, uh, parents will take up that issue from the basic level, that is the funding, then GBV will be easier to handle. Then when we wait for the NGOs to come in and open.